roughly 35 minutes until we run into some crazy traffic. <laughs> crazy traffic. We're going to see lots of animals today, folks. Promise you that. We'll pass by about a quarter of the habitats on display here at the San Diego Zoo. Can't promise that there will be an animal out and about in each one of those habitats. But sometimes you guys see things that I don't see Thoughts. up here from my driver's seat. <laughs> Ooh, that's so if you guys are seeing an animal that I'm not seeing, one. feel free to freak out, one. wave your arms, let me know, and I'll try to position the bus the best I can to give you all the best view possible. Quick safety reminder, as you can see ahead, the bus does pass pretty close to some tall plants and trees. Like this bamboo on the right hand side. <laughs> so just a reminder to please keep your arms, legs, personal belongings, and loved ones inside the bus at all times. And please remain seated while the bus is in motion. As soon as I stop, you guys are welcome to get up and move around, jockey for a better position, take pictures, take videos. You know, do your social media thing. I know how it is. <laughs> We're dropping down into the Asian rainforest Ooh, now. Asian rainforest. It's feeling a little bit cooler, a little bit shadier. That's the effect that we're hoping to create. Rainforests are sometimes called the lungs of the planet. They help regulate our global air temperature. Of course, they suck in carbon dioxide and poop out oxygen so that we can breathe. They also purify our global water system. And we, we like rainforests a lot here at the zoo. They're also home to an astounding array of wildlife. Over 50% of all terrestrial, that is land based wildlife, lives in rainforests. Let's see if we can see one of our rainforest dwellings. Is the tiger down there? Do you see the tiger? Uh -huh. Alright guys, feel free to kind of get up, move around, see if you can catch a glimpse of our Malayan tiger. Is it fun? It's a big cat, right? Oh, that's lion! That's a flying lion. The tiger has stripes. It's a wall, it has a wall. Kind of DC yet? No. It's not DC yet. It's not DC yet. You guys are getting lucky so far. <laughs> and later we're going to walk around on the ground after we do the bus tour. Okay, Winnie? I have to go stand on the seat. Why don't I go home? Why don't I go home? Oh, did you hear it? Okay. Are you scared of having to eat you? Oh, did you hear it? Is that how it's going? I don't know if that's a tiger. I don't know if that's a tiger. I'm pretty sure there's a tiger sound. Keep on rolling here, see what else we can see today. We only have 35 minutes, folks, so I want to make sure you guys see as many animals as possible. Feel free to come back down Tiger Trail, which is the walkway you see on the right-hand side here. You can follow along in your handheld map as well. I'll be kind of pointing out landmarks as we drive around the zoo today. Tiger Trail, as you move down the hill, turns into Hippo Trail. It's back just right by the water. You can't get the best view of the hippos from the buses. Unfortunately, the zoo was not designed around the bus tour. It was the other way around. But we do our best. So we'll go see you later. Sometimes folks on the bottom deck can get a view of one of our hippos inside the pool. There's a hippo on the ground. I am seeing our hippo way down in the center of the pool. It would be tough for you guys to see. Maybe as I swing out to the left here, you guys can catch the barest glimpse. 
really not the best of views, though. We're gonna keep on going, see what else we can find. The afternoon, when it's the warmest, is a nice time to come down Tiger and Hippo Trail, enjoy some of this nice, shady part of the zoo. So why are we going to Reptile first? That's what they recommended by one KL family. Is there some monkeys here? What's going on here? The monkeys? The monkeys? Is there one on the tree? Do you see? Is there a wee wee monkey? 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 Are there a wee wee monkey? Are there a wee <laughs> they have a long tail. What color is the tail? Look, they're playing over there. They're swimming in Canada. Yeah, they're hugging each other. And a lot of the monkeys who live in this habitat were actually rescued from bush meat markets in Asia. That's where a protected species is bought and sold for human food. Very, very illegal. We work with our conservation partners to rescue animals from these types of situations all across the world. How many monkeys do you see? Yeah. Oh, four or five. I see six. Get another little view of these monkeys as we pass through a break in the bamboo on the right hand side here. Yeah, they're monkeys. We have some otters in this habitat, but they're easier to see from the past. Uh, there's a little path you see off to the right here that says Asian Cats and Eagle Trail. That's where you can find animals like our snow leopards, red panda. And then Eagle Trail leads to this walkway up and to the right. So you have large birds of prey like eagles and condors up here. And you have some water birds from Africa to the left hand side here. This is our African marsh. Flamingos, cormorants, pelicans. Lots to see here, folks. So if you like birds, definitely make your way back to this spot. Do you like spot. birds? We have several sea eagles, panting condors, harpy eagles up there on the right. These blackbirds here in the middle of the habitat on the left are our cormorants. Don't put your hand up. We have some gigantic white pelicans here. Close up to the fence. There's also a great blue heron perched up on top of the willow tree there. That is not one of our African species, that's a local species. Actually, San Diego County is considered a biodiversity hotspot. It is one of the areas in the world with the greatest concentration of species. So we have all kinds of birds who come and visit us here at the zoo. Herons, the egrets, the hawks, even golden eagles occasionally. Sometimes you can get a view, and yeah, I see one of our stellar sea eagles. Black and white with a bright yellow beak up there along Eagle Walk. Right there, on the you guys can catch a glimpse as we drive by. Do you see that? So yeah, I'm a big fan of birds, folks. If you guys like birds, definitely come back and check out this area. Tons of different species. And on cloudy days like this, you guys take a good day to come to the zoo. When it's really sunny in the summer, the animals get really hot. You know, sometimes they hang out in the shade where they're really tough to see, they're not very active. But on cool, cloudy days like this, you see a lot of our animals out and about. <laughs> this is Highway 163 on the left-hand side, if you follow that north about 35 miles, you get to our other front door at the San Diego Zoo Wildlife the Alliance, the the Safari the Park. If you haven't been there yet, I highly recommend it. It's about 10 times the size of the San Diego Zoo. Is it zebra? With over half of the area set aside as native wildlife habitat. We have some lesser kudu and gazelles on the right hand side here. Lots of different species with hooves and antlers or horns.
you little guys are lots of fun to watch. Hello. This is Polar Plunge on the left-hand side. We're going to pull over here and see if we can get a view of some of our polar bears. And I do see one of our polar bears on the far side of the habitat, up on the rock. Folks at the front of the bus on the top, once I stop, feel free to kind of move backwards and get a better view if you like. I'll stop here for a minute or two if you guys want to get a video or a picture. Anymore. Is that fun? Is that fun? <laughs> you don't, do you like the polar bears? Unfortunately, there is less ice in the Arctic every year due to climate change. Down this side. There are a lot of things that we as humans can do that to the prevent the Come on. acceleration of climate change. One of those things is riding public transportation. You guys are all doing that right now, so good job. Yeah! <laughs> Polar bear heroes. We have some Bok to Bok on the right hand side here. Oh, what is that animal? What's that animal? Yeah. On the right side of my driver's seat now, they're coming into view. Bok to Bok is just a fun word to say, guys. They live in South Africa. And at one point, there were only 17 Bantabak left in the world. Look at that pretty girl. Look at that pretty girl. A rancher in South Africa realized that their numbers were declining, gathered them up onto his land to protect them until a national wildlife refuge could be established. And there are now more than 3,000 Bantabak in the wild, up from 17. Look. Can you see Daddy Pig? These are our Chico and Peccary. And a major species on the right hand side here. And if you see these cables overhead, this is the western entrance and exit of our Sky Mari aerial tram. That is free to ride like this tour with your admission. Ride on the sky, look at the sky. Do and it's the fastest that? way to get from one side of the yeah. zoo to the other. Yeah, I want to do that. I was telling them that the show. Guy Fari gives you a nice a view back, of the animals, show. plants, and habitats and from above, so as well as some nice views of downtown San Diego if the weather is clear enough. It's water mostly. <laughs> Sometimes we can catch some of our mountain lions. Like leather <laughs> or rubber, like under the things pellet? under the sea. Yeah. So they slap your legs and it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> this is a species that does their hunting at so night. So they're not always Jenny active and visible during the, the day. Uh -huh. And sure enough, we've been in and they still have the most rubber, named species rubber things come out that we have. Over 80 different names <laughs> in English and the indigenous hurts. languages of North and South America. <laughs> they're known as Pumas, panthers, cougars, catamounts, lots of different names. And if you think you're smelling a skunk, folks, that is no skunk. It is our maned wolves who live in this habitat to our right. Look for red fur, white fluffy ears. Sometimes they're hanging out on the far side of the habitat under the bamboo. Okay. Despite the name, it's not a true wolf. It is its own species. It comes from the Dorado region of South America. That's basically modern day 
Unfortunately, the Cerrado region has become heavily impacted due to the spread of farmland and urban development. But a lot of work that we are doing with our conservation partners in South America has resulted in an increase in Maine wolf population. But this conservation work does matter, folks. Switching gears from South America to Africa, these are our South African rock hyraxes. Coming up on the left hand side. Does anyone know what the closest living relative to the rock hyrax? What's wrong? You want to go down? Well, I'm going to start. Really good go guesses I'm hearing. <laughs> the real answer is not that much weirder than a duck. It's actually the elephant. Right? Super weird. It has something to do with which teeth turn into tusks and the placement of the mammary glands. I don't know. Scientific classification is weird. Doesn't make sense. Sticking with our Africa team, check out Emmett, our male African lion on the right hand side here. He's lying there. He's very lazy. Hey, hey, hey. put your head back. Folks on the back yes, end of the bus. Yes, yes, yes. You. Is she lying? We lying. also have our female elephant. Yeah. <laughs> female elephant. It's lying on the table lion. right there. <laughs> Ellen, uh, up into the right hand side of the habitat. You see it Some of you guys may be able to get it's a view of her. It's right there. It's a little harder to see back there behind the trees. It's right there, Winnie. It's lying on my foot. Could you sit, stand, sit down? Are any of you planning on sticking around until the zoo closes at 8 p.m.? <laughs> if you are, that's the best time to find these lions out and about, and also the best opportunity to hear them roar. Their roars are so loud that even though we're in the back Whoa! of the zoo now, you can sometimes hear them roaring all the way in the front parking lot. Another large mat coming up on the right hand side here. Folks on the top deck, if you're on the left, you might have to kind of look over the right hand side. This is Nindiri, our South American Jaguar from the Amazon rainforest. She's right here up against the fence line. Oh, you see it? Do you see it? A few feet from the bus. Right there. Hey, Dragon. Yeah. yeah. Jaguars are our flagship species like of our Amazonia Bowser. Club of Conservation Act. Bowser, what's in the box? Bowser is in my home box. And there is indicators. <laughs> there are indicator species that mean uh, scientists look to the health of your species to determine the health of the overall ecosystem. Put on your hat. Put on your hat. You don't want it? But it's too hot. And as long as I'm moving okay, super slow like okay. this, folks, it's okay to be standing. Just make sure you use the handrails. When I'm going a little faster, try to keep your feet. I'm not too strict. Elephants. If you guys want to do a little bit something in your own lives to protect the habitats of jaguars and so many other species in the Amazon, you can buy shade-grown coffee. That just means that the existing rainforest doesn't have to be torn down to grow coffee plantations. They are partial shade plants, uh, the coffee arabica plant, and they can grow just fine under the rainforest canopy. What is that? So it's kind of a win-win situation. We get our coffee, and the animals get to keep their rainforest habitat. The largest rats. The bear's paper on the right-hand side here. Kind of an anteater-looking animal. Look at that. Oh, and this is 
this elephant odyssey, so I'm sure you guys are ready to see some elephants. You ready to see some elephants? See what we can find. So this part of the habitat is where our male elephants, who just joined the zoo recently, Sunzu and Nepo live. They're nine and ten years old. But they may not be out and about. They might be in our elephant care center right now, which is in building on the right hand side. In any event, we can almost always get a good view of our female elephants. It would be an unusual day indeed if we didn't get a good sighting of at least one of our elephants on this tour. Hannah. Hannah. So this is our elephant care center. And these are open air stalls that our elephants ah, enter elephant. voluntarily each day to receive veterinary care from our wildlife care. No, this looks not like Shaba up here to the right hand here. side at the head of the bus. She is our African Where is female it? elephant. Where is it? Where is it, Hannah? Do you guys know the easiest way to tell African elephants apart from Asian elephants? Yes. Where they live. The ears, that's right. African elephants have much larger ears than Asian elephants. Also, if you know you're looking at a female elephant and you see tusks, that is an African elephant. Female Asian elephants do not have tusks. So two easy ways to tell elephants to be seen apart. Sticking with our theme of Africa, here are our beautiful, beautiful secretary birds. Coming up on the right hand side here. Sure, what the black and white of the bird is. So, they like to introduce um, smaller bird species um, in to kind of help with the socializing behavior of the birds who live in these habitats. And those other bird species can change over time. Wildlife care specialists kind of experiment all the time with which are the healthiest relationships. That's dinosaur. Our secretary birds can fly, but they prefer to do most of their hunting on the ground. Sometimes I imagine being a little rodent or a lizard trying to run for dear life away from those big stomping clawed feet of the secretary bird. Wow, that elephant's so hungry. We do, we have several cheetahs. They live in urban jungles uh, where this tour does not go. But it's right by the front entrance, very easy to get to. The question was, are there cheetahs at the zoo? Yes, there are. I think uh, I'm going to get So these big structures you see in the habitat to the right are called utilitary. They're really useful for the wildlife care specialist to hang different feeding devices and enrichment activities from. Basically, you just drop a bunch of food on the ground. That doesn't really simulate the natural behavior of animals in the wild. Oh, it's an oh yeah. This is the area where that guy walked in. Yeah. All right, pop quiz: African or Asian elephant? Wow. Asian. You guys are paying attention. Good job. Female. So this is Mary. That's not a small elephant. Small elephant. elephant. This is a big Mary. elephant. I don't remember her exact age. She's either in her late fifties or early sixties. Undisputedly, the matriarch. I don't see any eyes in this elephant. Mary's been with us a long time. She doesn't move as quickly as she used to, but she's still just as beautiful as ever, as you can all see. She's getting a little 
hairy in her old age. He is small. I've heard of elephants uh, living into their 70s. I'm not sure what the oldest elephant that we know of is. But I know we've had elephants here at the zoo that have lived in the 60s and 60s in the late 60s. Why? It's just like a baby elephant. <laughs> no, it's not. Hey, which side would you look at? It's closer. Like we're talking about elephants. You know, the U.S. unfortunately is the number three ivory importer in the world. Why do elephants But actually, there's nothing here? special about ivory. It's just made of the same stuff as teeth. <laughs> ivory is kind of a, a made-up name that poachers came up with to charge more for that product. Yeah, it really harms a lot of elephants. So, you know, do your part to protect these beautiful and intelligent animals. Don't traffic in ivory. Hey, Grandpa! So I pointed out an African Grandpa. elephant earlier who I, that I thought was Shaba, but it looks like, it looks like this is Shaba. Really the other African small. elephant we saw earlier was either Sun Zoo or Nepo, one small, of our male like elephants. And I think he had one tusk, so I know who that was. But this is Shaba, our female African elephant. Getting a little late morning snack. Some of you guys may know that elephants have the longest gestation period of any animal that we know of. They carry, elephant mothers carry a baby for 22 months before giving birth. Compare that to nine months for a human. 14, 15 months for a rhino, eight months for a hippo, 15, 16 months for humpback whales. That's a really long time. I'm sure we have some others on the bus here, so. Look at this. That's a baby. The question is, can you cross an African and an Asian elephant? Yeah, a baby one. Like a liger. Uh, I don't believe so. They're absolutely distinct species uh, that can't breed genetically. But I'm not positive. Camel. Do they have a camel? Do you see the camel? They have a hump. One hump or two humps. Alright, we're going to keep on rolling here. I want to make sure to spend a lot of time when we have a really good view of an animal for you guys. When we have views that you can kind of see easily on foot on your own, I tend not to spend as much time. So, this is one example our California condors. See the condors? This one of the largest birds you can find in North America and a big conservation success story here at the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance. At one point there were only 22 California condors alive in the wild. They were so close to extinction. We undertook a very ambitious breeding program. We hatched over 200 California condor chicks up north at the safari park. And we released over 100 into the wild. So from a population of 22, there are now more than 500 California condors in the wilds of Central California and the Grand Canyon area of Arizona and Utah. We have some meerkats on the right-hand side here. Super fun to watch. And also a, a really peculiar animal species known as humans. They come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes and exhibit a lot of really strange and inexplicable behavior. This area on the right hand side is known as the Kopi habitat. Think of Pride Rock in the movie Lion King. Ah, look at that little squirrel. I made a These rocky outcroppings, like the Kopi region, are really important because they help to store water during the dry seasons of the 